Hi, it's Jackie here with the LGFA, and you're very welcome along to a, a very special show today. Um, we've obviously uh, had news recently of TG Cahar All-Star nominations, Players Player of the Year Award nominations, etc. The dust is settling uh, on the TG Cahar All-Ireland Finals from August, and uh, we are in uh, full swing with the club season. And in that regard, I'm delighted to introduce my four very special guests uh, this afternoon. I have Michelle Ryan from Bonnie McCarberry in Waterford, top left hand side of my screen. Aoife Burns from Dunamine in Monaghan is also on the call. Jeremy McCarthy, freelance reporter in Cork with various outlets, is also here. And Roisin Byrne from Sarsfields in Kildare. Folks, how are we doing? Very good. Great. Good, 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 good. good. Um, Roisin, I'll come to you first if you don't mind. Congrats on. Um, TG Carr All Ireland success in the intermediate grade. Congrats also on Lidl National League Division Three success earlier in the year. Um, player of the match on both occasions, and you're also uh, in the running for the uh, TG Carr Intermediate Players Player of the Year award as well. So it's been a nice um, little period for you recently, uh, Roisin. Yeah, it's been great. Um, we uh. We we obviously were delighted to get the win with the league, and then to go on and top that with a Leinster and an All Ireland. Like it's probably one of those years that you know if you if you start to think about it before it's happened, you know people will tell you that you can't think about those kind of things too soon. But it it feels kind of like a dream. Like the last couple of months hasn't happened, but yeah, we're pinching ourselves in Kildare a little bit. Riding the crest of a wave, still at uh, Roisin, plenty to look forward to at senior level as well next year. Um, going up against um, Dublin, Mead and Leash in Leinster will make it a nice foursome there. Looking forward to that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we looked at the league as a starting point for us and I think if we wanted to properly compete in senior, we need to be up closer to Division 1, Division 2. So I think that uh, we're going to be set up nicely going into senior championship, playing tougher teams and up in Division 2 now. So I look, I, I think the Kildare talent that's coming through in the next couple of years is just unbelievable. Like our underage is phenomenal and there's huge success in underage clubs in Kildare as well. So I think if we can hold our own for the next couple of years as senior and just pave the way for the younger girls coming through in the next few years, I think Kildare is going to be really a force to be reckoned with in the next couple of years. But we just need um the, the talent coming through in the underage is unbelievable. So when we get those young ones up, we're going to be unstoppable, I think. Very good. Well, you have terrific role models like yourself they have to look up to as well. Roshan, and congratulations on the All Star nomination as well. Just two from the intermediate grade nominated yourself and Fidelma Marin and from Clare. So that must be a nice, um, nice individual feeling as well. Yeah, it's it's great. Like it's November is a busy enough month. I'm actually getting married the week after the All Stars, so wow. um, I'm just lucky that that didn't clash with it. So yeah, it's just this year is unbelievable like obviously to have that on top of winning on Ireland is unbelievable um but I'll have to say the wedding is the most important thing in November at the minute naturally how are plans going for that they're going um <laughs> we're still in club championship as you know so yeah. um and my fiance Liam he plays um football in Kildare as well so they're in a senior semi-final next weekend so you know we're, we're planning stuff in the background but football's kind of taking the priority at the moment so when when everything finishes we'll get down to the nitty gritty but like you know it's less than two months away so I think we're going to be hit with a bit of a shock when football finishes and we still have a lot of work to do but we always land on our feet we'll be grand very good and look that's a big date in, in the diary for you um Roshan and there's another one coming much sooner than that you might let uh, our viewers know what's what lies in store coming up at the weekend yeah we're playing Eadstown tomorrow in the senior championship um it was a quick turnaround. We actually only played the semi final on Tuesday night. So, like, you know, it, it kind of feels a bit surreal. Like, you're trying to prepare for a senior championship, but we, we just got, got over the semi final and it was a tough semi final. Um, we got a good lead against Kilcullen early on, but uh, we just managed to hold on and clinch the lead at the end. But yeah, Eadstown are unbelievable. They won four in a row, now, or they're going for four in a row this year. Um, and sure, you know, like the talent there, like Grace Clifford. Ruth Sargent is probably the best centre back in the country at the minute. Like I've had to mark her in training this year, and I hate marking her, so I'm not looking forward to that. But uh, no, he's sound are absolutely deadly. But we've a, a really, really good young team. Um, we lost a lot of players last year. I think there's ten girls who started the senior final last year that aren't playing this year. But 
we're in a bit of a rebuilding phase, but we've done very, very well this year. So everyone's hopeful tomorrow we, we can do the job. Good stuff. That's I'm um, just looking at my calendar here. It's on eight o'clock tomorrow evening. Eight PM tomorrow, yep. Yeah. Okay, very good. As we record, this may go out on Friday. So it's either tomorrow evening, uh, it's Friday evening, senior final in Kildare's Eadstown against Sarsfields. You've suffered a little bit of heartbreak against Eadstown in recent times as well, Roshan. So it would be nice obviously to get one over on them. Yeah, um, I was away last year. Um, I came back from a cruciate injury at the start of the year, so right, actually, I missed yeah. the final last year. But um, the 2020, but the last time before I, I did my knee, we played them in a final um, and I think we lost by two points. Like, And it was, it's heartbreaking like, because, do you know, you're, we, we haven't won it since 2016, I think was the last time we won senior. So we just, we seem to always be so close to it, but we just haven't had the success yet. So, I think it would just mean so much to everyone in the club if we could do this this year. Okay, we wish you well, Rush, and we'll come back. Uh, and I don't want to wreck overall calls. You've been through a lot um, in terms of injury in recent times. We'll come back to you in a few minutes. And, and good to see you, Rush, and, and best wishes with everything. You've a lot. You've a lot on your plate. You've a lot going on, Michelle Ryan. How are things with you? Yeah. You're up there, Michelle. Yeah, good. You hear us? Yeah, good. How are you? I'm good, yeah. All good. Thanks very much. All good down here in Waterford. It's a standout number, Michelle. Um, 42 in a row. How many medals have you won now? How many finals have you been part of in, in, in that? Mm -hmm. The question I hate answering, if I'm honest. Um, uh, this year was my 25th county medal, and it's it's not something I personally think about. It's something that I get asked, um, and I have to have the answer for. Um. But I think when people ask us about it um, and how we keep doing it every year, you literally just move on to the next. And I think that's what being a sports person is anyway. Like you, you achieve what you want to achieve and it's then it's on to the next. And for us, it's just about maintaining that hunger and that desire to keep going and keep improving. And like we said, our stall out that the county title is, is our first goal all every single year. And you know, we probably had to work harder this year than we've maybe ever, ever since I've been playing, had to work for it. Um, I've never experienced it going to extra time before. And it was a tough battle. It was a real slog, to be honest. Um, and as some people would have said who were there watching it, we, we nearly did everything we could to, to give it away. Um, there were times in that game when the opportunities presented themselves for, for Cumber Rangers to to take the lead and to, to maybe take the game by the scruff of the neck. And they just went to begging for them. And when it crucially came down to, I suppose, stepping up in the second half of extra time, we were able to put on two scores through Kellyanne Hogan, through tremendous scores that you'll see in any code um, and keep that lead going. And it was the incredible Karen McGrath who leapt into the air in front of our goals to, to deny a ball that could have possibly dipped in under the crossbar and, you know, it is the small margins in games and those things we still get excited about. There was still plenty of hopping and lepping and cheering around at the final whistle because it just still means that much to us. It's hard for some to believe, but it really does. That's incredible. Michelle, the fact that it was so close um, and you really had to dig it out. And, and as you say, there was there was moments there where you wondered, God, is, is this run going to end? Does that make it even more satisfying that this was one you really you know pulled out of the fire? Absolutely. And I think any of the girls who've been playing with a, a lot of years have said that, um, do you know, I suppose those of us who've been around a while, we've gone through a real cycle with regards to county finals. Do you know, there was times in those years where you were winning them quite comfortably. Um, times when, you know, teams were maybe amalgamating and trying to do their best to, to knock you off your perch. And there was a challenge, but you know, this was a real battle um, and we've had a few of those battles, but I don't think anyone any, as tense as, and as tightly contested as there was last Sunday. And like you said, it's that's the real test of your, not just your football ability, but your mental strength. You know, it may be some people might say it's easy to win so many titles in a row if you're not being contested, it's not being challenged. But to be actually tested both physically, football wise and mentally as well, you know, there is a huge satisfaction for all of us to come out of that yeah brilliant stuff um michelle you're a teacher obviously and uh by my maths anyway 42 divided by two is 21 
which uh, leads me nicely on to Aoife Burns. <laughs> How are you, Aoife? Uh, 21 in a row for Dunamoyne in, in, in Monaghan recently. Um, Aoife, can I ask you the same question as Michelle? And I doubt it's going to be 25. How many of how many county titles have you won now? How, how many have you won under the belt? Um, I think I've six under the belt now. Not, not um, I joined yeah. two. Yeah, yeah, not as much as some of the girls have. <laughs> it's been, it's still been a phenomenal plenty run as well. Don't worry. It's still a nice <laughs> number. <laughs> you still have plenty of years left playing, don't worry. <laughs> Aoife, what, what does, as Michelle alluded to it there, this, this one meant uh, an awful lot to, to Ballymac. Did this one for Dunamine mean as uh, as much as ever to, to you folk? Yeah, definitely. I think um, any one we get to means as much as the last one, I suppose you could say. Um, and we usually do just have to take one game at a time and hopefully get to the final every year. Like, you're not always guaranteed. But when we do get to that stage, it is... Um, we have to work hard for it and it is a nice achievement to be getting there, I suppose. Yeah, and, and Michelle and Aoife, you know, both of you um, obviously went on last year and clinched provincial titles as well. So I presume, Aoife, that's that's the, the aim as well now to go into Ulster. And of course, you can test an All-Ireland final as well last year to, to try and get back uh, to those lofty heights once again. Yeah, I suppose we do have to take every game at a time now with Money Glass, the Antrim champions now in two weeks, or maybe it's three, I couldn't even tell you. Um so I suppose we'll have our we'll have a good challenge there against them. We did play them last year in the final and it went right down to the wire. So we have to take each game as we go and see how we get on. Yeah, I'm I presume you're conscious of 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 Money Glass. You know, they've a lot of talent in their ranks, obviously or the printers there and, and, and a few more and Antrim have come on leaps and bounds, had a, f- a phenomenal season this year as well. So they're definitely, and, and as you know from last year, as you say, they're definitely not to be underestimated. Yeah, they were, especially, they were really fit. I remember last year, um, and a really speedy, quick, fast team as well. Now I suppose we could probably be the same, but um, yeah, no, we'll really have our, we'll really have a challenge ahead of us, um, knowing what they were like last year in the final. Um, but I suppose we, we know what they're like and we'll have to set up for that in the next few weeks in training and we'll be working towards that. Stuff wish you well. Um Jerry, you're waiting patiently there. How's all in Cork? What's what's happening? What's coming up over the weekend? I know we're not quite at the concluding stages at senior level. Um, but obviously, you know, more and Abbey have obviously been knocking around the block in the last few years. What are the what are the signs? What's happening in Cork? What's happening on Lee side? How are all the rebels? Oh, Rebels are always causing trouble, as you know yourself, Jackie. Looking for trouble. Uh, before I answer, can I just say between the two of us, I mean, how many All Ireland medals are on this call, and neither of us are bringing anything to the party. So it's real uh, to be it's exalted company. I mean, today, um, a lot of I have admiration for all three players there, and yourself too, obviously. Um, we are back. The, the senior, the county senior championship in Cork draws a lot of attention, ladies football, and in two weeks' time, it'll be Airog and Moran Abbey once again. These are the two clubs that have contested over the last couple of years. It's a little bit different this year, though. Um, both teams are under different management so Shane Rolain is no longer involved with Moran Abbey um, and his job has gone to Ronan McCarthy who is a former Cork Senior Football Manager and who helped Carby Rangers win a Cork Senior Men's title not too long ago yeah. um, for a rogue, Joe Carroll who's won four I think it's four if not five all Ireland minor LGFA titles with Cork over the last few years so there's a couple of things to that the, the jobs that come up now in Cork Ladies Football at club level are attractive for a lot of reasons but they're attracting some pretty you know, high pedigree when you think of Ronald McCarthy and Joe Carroll. So the two teams are back in the final. They haven't had it all their own way this year. Um, the semi-finals were a case in point. Um, just last night, actually, um, it overcame and had nine points to one two, which was a lot closer than it seems. Uh, whereas we were pushed all the way by St. Val's uh, two seventeen to three eleven. And that St. Val's team included a famous name, Breach Corkery, who's still playing at senior football level for Cork and doing a great job. But it's the usual suspects. It's another intriguing final the big question is can Oak finally get over or Abbey can they finally get over which nobody has been able to do apart from West Cork Division in the past decade and it's very hard to tell I think it's going to be a lot closer this year in uh, two weeks time when the two teams meet it's going to be hugely anticipated game a lot of interest in it because of the managers and the change of management um, and a lot of interest in both teams too because they all want to make that breakthrough and I think Monabi definitely want to get back into Munster and want to get back to the All-Ireland stage. It's the same usual suspects, the Southern Sisters are still there. 
uh, Deirdre Cronin is a name you mightn't have heard before, Ellie Jack and Ryan. They've got some good young players. They've won minor championship this year. So they are rebuilding while all this is going on. Um, but it would be interesting to see how they go on. They've gone quite well uh, in Shane Ryan's absence. Uh, Ryan McCarthy has come in and done a really good job, as has Joe Carroll with their Oak. So two teams stacked with inter-county talent. Their Oak have got some Kerry seniors. They've got Emer Scally. Uh, former car player, they've got the Clearies, you know, they've got they've got some really, really good players. It's going to be a fascinating game as it was last year in terms of tactics and how they approach it. That's two weeks' time. To, on this Saturday, we have a triple header of finals in MTU and Cork, a senior B final, which is for all the clubs that don't get to the latter stages of the senior A championship, which I think is a great idea because it keeps the clubs playing into the championship. And that's been contested by Fermoy, who won it last year, and Castlehaven, a team from down my direction, who've come from junior D to senior in less than five or six, I think six years, and one county's all the way up. So this is their first year senior, and they're in a senior B final. That's going to be fascinating. We have a West Cork Derby in the junior final, as between O'Donovan Rossa from Skibbereen, Donnie St. Maui. And the intermediate final, which is the grade just below senior in Cork, is contested this year by Glanmire. And I bring this up because Glanmire have lost the last three intermediate finals, one after the other, two of those and 30-meter free kicks. They are gasping to get up to senior. They are all but a senior team, but... They are playing a team in a club I know people on this call might have heard about over since last year, and that is Nave Aborn from Balavorni. Yes. This is the great club on the border between Cork and Kerry that won the Cork Junior A, won the Munster Junior A, and went to the All-Ireland Junior A final only to lose at the last step. They are coming up the tracks. I can't wait. Uh, either team that goes up from intermediate will add to the senior championship, which is getting more competitive in Cork, Jackie, and it needs to. We need some new challengers. Um but at, at the time of, uh, as we speak, and ahead of another uh, county final, the two best teams are in it. The two most talented teams, most experienced. But what's going to be fascinating between Moran Abbey and Airog is the new management and how they line up. Will there be something different in terms of tactics? And what this, whoever wins it, how they go in Munster and beyond after that. So a lot to play for in Cork, a lot happening at this time of the year. Um, and it's just fascinating to hear from around the country as well how the different championships are going. But in Cork, it's it's as you were, Moran Abbey versus Aero. But uh, I, I'm anticipating an absolutely cracking final the week after next. Good stuff. So we might try and get you on before that final, Jar. So if you want to keep your diary clear for 20 to 25 no minutes in a couple of weeks, I'll 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 send you a text about an hour in advance, Jar, to see if you're if you're free. <laughs> no the usual. Um, just looking around, folks. So Limerick have a senior final this weekend, according to the fixtures that come into us. And I would urge counties that aren't featured on our list to. Please get in touch. Um, senior semi-finals in Mayo. Uh, Dublin have a big final tomorrow evening as well. Kilmacud Croaks against um, Nafina. Um, Fingalians mm-hmm. are in an intermediate uh, final as well against Jude's. And we had Neve Crowley actually from Fingalians, who's an All-Star nominee, um, speaking about that transition uh, from uh, the minor ranks to a senior player this year. And if if you haven't seen it, it's on our, our channel. It's fascinating and very honest um, stuff from Neve as well. Um, so there's plenty happening. There's a senior uh, final in Loud as well. There's a couple of finals in Britain. Kerry have a senior final for Nuke St. Sennans against Southern Gales, just to let people know as well. You've mentioned Cork. Obviously, Kildare, Roisin has, uh, has touched on it. Um and plenty other uh stuff happening across the country as well as we hurtle towards the provincial series. Roshin, I did promise I'd come back to you. Um, you know, you mentioned winning a league title, winning an All Ireland title, uh, an All Star nomination, playing in a county final, preparing to get married, an All Star banquet, all of that kind of good stuff. Um. But we did uh, cross paths during a time when you were uh, on the comeback trail from injury. And um, when you're in that space, um, Roshan, are you are you kind of trying to visualize big days and big moments like this to keep yourself going? I'm just you know interested uh, to to get a sense of, of where you were and how you managed to come to come through adversity. You know, on more than one occasion with injury. Um, I won't lie, it was very, very difficult. Um, physically, I like, I feel like I could do that again. The you know, it's sore for a couple of weeks, you get back, you do your rehab, but mentally, like, I really, really struggled. Um, there was times when you know, I was, I was just so afraid of having to go through that again that before I'd even gotten back, I was thinking, 
oh, I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to put myself through that again. And I look, those are fleeting thoughts. Like, and I'm very lucky that, like, you know, my family are amazing. My fiance is unreal and loads of my friends play football. So, you know, I had people to pull me out of that. But, like, I, I did really struggle at times. Um, And I did find it hard to visualise myself being back and actually getting there. But, like, you know, I you have to look at it in, in smaller steps. Like every time I looked to being back with Kader, being back with Sarsfield, I would kind of get panicked and think, oh my God, that's a million miles away. But I had to look at what was next in front of me. Was it getting back running? Was it getting back turning? Was it just building strength in myself? Um, you know, I, I think it can be very nerve wracking the first time you step out there thinking, is this going to happen again? Um, and anyone I've talked to who's had this injury, you know, everyone's the same. Like you, you do worry about it, but... I just have to tell myself, like I spent hours and hours and hours in the gym. I, I did everything that I could have done. I left no stone unturned. So I just had to, you know, in my own head say, if this happens again, it's not my fault. You know, I've done everything that I needed to do. And I just have to, you know, have faith in everything that I've done that, you know, I'm stronger and better and faster than I was before. So I've given myself every opportunity to avoid that injury again. So, you know, I, I, I nearly found visualising big days like that like an All-Ireland final or even even a first league match with Kildare I found visualising that was tough I just needed to look ahead to what was next week what was next month and you know that helped me I, I took a bit of time out as well like myself and Liam went travelling for, for six months uh, so I got to do loads of my rehab abroad um, and it was good being a little bit away from it as well because I was looking at rehabbing for my own body rather than rehabbing for football and then when I was able to come back um, I was ready to go, ready to go back to the pitch, and you'd be surprised how quickly your fears are alleviated when you get a couple of games under your belt. Yeah, I swear. and I have to say, Kildare fans are lucky you're back, you know, and the, the general LGFA public were were delighted you're back as well. Rush, an absolute pleasure to watch it in action and a phenomenal year. Um, Michelle, that's honesty at its uh, in its purest form. Absolutely, um, you know. People sometimes forget that, you know, players are people behind it all and we're not professional players either. You know, we have a lot going on in our lives, whether it's our jobs or our personal lives and so on. And, you know, being a, an inter-county footballer, it requires a huge amount of commitment. And then when things aren't going right, there's more commitments, an extra amount of commitment, the rehab that that takes. And, you know, I suppose the importance is for every inter-county setup to know and to make sure that there is those resources and those people in the setup so that, when those injuries occur, that there's someone still always checking in with those people because it can be a very mentally lonely journey. Now, fortunately, I haven't had that injury, but I, I know a lot of players in my panels over the years who who have and are who even different injuries that take up to a, a number of months. And it can be very disheartening. It can be very lonely. Um, It can be a tough thing to come back from and maybe just kind of losing that sense of being part of it as well. And, and that's why it's important that setups have you know people in place check in um rather than just kind of leave it to the player themselves but look I think it's a, a testament to players like Roisin that they're able to bring themselves back from that not only physically like she said but mentally as well and still have that hunger and be able to go out and play without that fear and holding them back um because at the end of the day you know they've done all that they can physically but mentally I mean we all know most of the game is played in our head mentally and it can be the our greatest asset and it can be our greatest enemy at times. But it's 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 tough. But it, look, it's part of being a sports person. And it's, as I said, it's that whole mental toughness side of, of the game that most people don't see. Talk They talk about it, all right, but they don't see and they don't see what it takes to actually get that. Yeah, yeah and I think what Michelle said about um, having, you know, you're, 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 in, you're not a professional player at the end of the day. And I think a lot of our identities can get wrapped up in being footballers you know, most intercounty players, they're told from when they're five or six years old, oh, you're rushing the footballer. And that can be very hard to get your head around when that's taken away. But I think it's important for people playing at this level to realise that there's a lot more to your identity than just being a sports person because, you know, time is limited playing sports, but you have to kind of invest in kind of other aspects of your life and realise that it's not the be all and end all, even though it does seem like that on big occasions. But I think it's important for people to recognise that it is an amateur sport and there is more going on outside of just football. Yeah, absolutely. Great message to finish with, Roshan. Absolutely fantastic. We wish you well. Great to see you back as well. And we'll see you very, very soon as well. And best wishes in the county final. Um, 
Michelle Ryan from uh, Ballymac in Waterford, Aoife Burns, Dunham Mine in Monaghan, Jer McCarthy, renowned freelance reporter from Cork and Roisin Byrne from Sarsfields and Kildare. Really enjoyed the chat. The time has flown as it always does. Best wishes and we'll talk to you real soon. And thank you so much for joining me today.